Chinese troops and their allies are amassing an invasion force along the southern border of the U.S. Their numbers are filled with soldiers from Brazil, Venezuela, Bolivia, and other Latin American countries. Over the last several years, the U.S. let Latin America slip through its fingers and into the wide open arms of China. Now they're paying dearly for it. Every country south of the U.S. border is now an ally of China, and the U.S. may not make it through the coming conflict. This extremely terrifying scenario is poised to take place if the United States doesn't slow the spread of Chinese influence in Latin America. For several years, China has been stealing the power and influence that the U.S. once exerted over the countries to the south. What was once a part of the world that the U.S. rarely worried about may become its biggest adversary. But how could this happen? How could China steal Latin America right from under the nose of the U.S.? Let's find out. The shift in power in Latin America began in the early 2000s. As the U.S. shifted its focus to the Middle East and Asia, China was eyeing countries in Latin America. In 2000, China contributed less than 2% of imports going to Latin America. However, as the economy continued to grow at a tremendous pace, its exports began to reach across the world. By 2010, trade between China and Latin America grew at an average annual rate of 31%, leading to a value of $180 billion a year. Just over a decade later, trade between China and Latin America totaled $450 billion and is only continuing to grow. In Brazil, a country with the largest economy in the region, China ramped up bilateral trade from $2 billion in the year 2000 to $100 billion by 2021. Like many countries in Latin America, trade with China makes up a gigantic portion of their imports and exports. 30% of all exports from Brazil go to China, including 80% of the country's soybean crop and 60% of its iron ore. And this same story is unfolding across many countries in Latin America. Estimates put U.S. trade with Latin America at just under $2 trillion, but every year that China grows its economic presence in the region, the U.S. will see a decrease in trade. However, there is much more at stake than just money. Power and influence are beginning to shift, and if the U.S. isn't careful, they may find governments around Latin America being replaced with pro-Chinese regimes. But let's back up a sec. How did we get here? How could the U.S. let China become so influential in the region of the world that is right next door? Much of it has to do with U.S. neglect, but China's has also been calculated in its decisions, which has paid off greatly. China uses Latin America for exports, such as soybeans, copper, petroleum, oil, and other raw materials. All of these things help with the industrial development of their economy. China, in return, provides high-tech products and other manufactured goods. Venezuela, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, Chile, Argentina, and Uruguay are all part of China's Belt and Road Initiative that doubles as both an economic and influence-spreading tool for Beijing. As it became apparent that Latin America could be used as a major economic hub while also hurting the U.S., China took full advantage of the opportunity. Their first move was to invest in Latin America. By pouring cash in developing and growing economies, China was seen as an ally that could bring wealth to certain countries in Latin America. Ever since the year 2000, China has invested over $75 billion in the raw material sector of Latin America. This includes refineries and processing plants in areas with coal, natural gas, oil, and uranium. As technology has evolved and batteries for electric cars and other industries become more important, China has poured another $4.5 billion into lithium production in Mexico and the Lithium Triangle of Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile. These three countries contain more than half of the planet's known lithium reserves. The company Power Chin has more than 50 projects across Latin America. They procure huge amounts of resources and generate energy for many nations. Unfortunately, this is not done in a sustainable way, which has caused many environmental concerns. But the investments China has made in Latin America far outweigh the planet's destruction for some of the governments. The more money China invests in countries with developing economies, the more power they seize. Bribes can be made to powerful politicians and money talks in most of the world. There's also the fact that it's hard to say no to a nation that's providing your country with jobs, income, and trade. The more China invested in Latin America, the easier it was for them to drive policies and economic decisions in its favor. All of this happened while the U.S. was focused on other parts of the world. There were even reports by experts in Latin America geopolitics warning the government that if they neglected South America for too long, Chinese trade deals and influence would grow to alarming levels in the region, and that's exactly what happened. The China Development Bank began funding solar and wind projects. They provided money to build Latin America's largest solar plant in Jujuy, Argentina, along with the Punta Sierra Wind Farm in Coquimbo, Chile. 
As one of the world leaders in renewable energy, China already had the experience to provide contracts that would both benefit them and Latin American countries. It should be noted that the United States does provide development funds to many South and Central American companies. However, many Chinese investments don't come with any stipulations, and oftentimes certain regulations and rules need to be followed with money provided by the US. But the energy sector isn't the only thing that China's been investing in. They also have specifically targeted other important economic projects that's allowed them to gain even more favor with Latin American leaders. Infrastructure is the backbone of a nation. China knows this as they have invested heavily in their own infrastructure, which is one of the reasons they've been able to grow their economy at an astonishing rate. Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Ecuador, Peru, and Uruguay are all members of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. This is a branch that China uses to fund construction projects throughout Latin America. They've invested in ports, railways, and canals. But in the age of information technology, China has shifted to more nefarious forms of investment. China has provided money to Latin American nations to develop AI cloud computing, smart cities, and 5G technology. Huawei is one of the largest Chinese multinational technology corporations. It's invested tons of money in Latin America and has been welcomed by some leaders, even though the United States warned that Huawei equipment could leave countries vulnerable to Chinese cyber attacks. However, China's deals are too good for many to pass up, especially because many Latin American countries, including Argentina and Brazil, rely heavily on their cellular networks. China is providing more countries with the infrastructure they need, which has allowed them to be seen more favorably by Latin American policymakers and leaders. At the same time, China is likely mining data and influencing news, media, and advertisements that many in Latin America see. They more than likely have been using their investments in infrastructure to influence the way Latin American people think about China. It's things like this that cost China money at first, but create a return on investment that's much more than just an influx of funds over time. They've also allowed China to gain more power over many Latin American countries. Another major investment that China's made in Latin America is not what you might think. China and Brazil began to work on a joint satellite research and production program all the way back in 1988, and China's largest space facility located outside of the nation is in the Patagonian desert of Argentina. That's right, China has invested in Latin American space programs, which might not seem like the best use of funds, but has paid off big for China. They've even built ground stations in Bolivia, Ecuador, and Venezuela. With each new investment in Latin America, there's an influx of money and jobs for the citizens of the country. When times are hard, people don't really care where their jobs are coming from as long as there's work. That being said, any deal with China will almost always include a component that strengthens Beijing's position in the country. Whether that's in the form of debt or political influence, it's become a major concern for the US as policies in South America particularly seem to be increasingly shaped by China's influence. Even investments in things like space programs likely come with kickbacks for politicians who are more lenient on Chinese practices in Latin America. It also might allow them to put people in power that China can control in the future. The more in-debt leaders or entire economies are to China, the more power they'll wield in the region. The COVID pandemic also presented China with a unique opportunity in Latin America. As countries scramble to procure face masks and other PPE, China strategically sent these vital supplies to nations in Latin America that they wanted to strengthen relations with. It's terrible that people's lives were being leveraged for influence, but that's the world we live in. While the United States struggled to procure enough protective equipment for its citizens, China was in the unique position to deliver face masks and testing kits to other nations around the world. Now, like many things with China, things aren't always what they seem. The CDC reports that there have been over 1.1 million COVID-related deaths in the US, while there are only around 120,000 COVID deaths in China. Obviously, the Chinese number is not accurate. This is because the government ordered doctors to not put COVID as a cause of death on death certificates. They also just flat out didn't report many COVID fatalities in the nation. What this means is that China is not particularly worried about being transparent about how the country fared during the pandemic. What they were concerned about was how China looked during the crisis. It's already likely millions and millions of people died during the pandemic due to the harsh lockdown procedures and the inadequate response capabilities in many parts of China. However, rather than supplying their own citizens with face masks and PPE, China was shipping them out across the world to boost their economy while simultaneously leveraging those vital supplies to open new trade deals and increase influence in certain regions. 
By October 2020, only months after the world shut down due to COVID, China had delivered 179 billion masks, 1.73 billion protective suits, and 543 million testing kits to 150 different countries around the world. It's not clear how much of this equipment was kept within China to help the government combat the virus there, but it's hard to believe China was more concerned about helping others out of the kindness of their hearts. It's much more likely that China took advantage of the situation to make Beijing look more favorable to other governments. But not all countries were treated equally. Nations in Latin America that China saw as being more strategic investments received more equipment, while others received less, even if they needed the PPE and testing machines just as much. In Latin America, the pandemic opened up numerous diplomatic opportunities for China, allowing them to steal more influence from the US. As terrible as it is, the pandemic made Latin America even more reliant on China, which was great news for Beijing, and terrible news for everyone else. At the same time that many governments all but shut down, China continued to buy beef from Uruguay, copper from Chile, oil from Colombia, and soybeans from Brazil. This helped these countries weather the storm while putting them further into China's debt. But even during the pandemic and afterward, China continued to invest in Latin American countries. In 2020, most of the $17 billion China spent on overseas foreign direct investments and loans went to South America. The Export-Import Bank of China lent $137 billion to Latin American governments in exchange for the oil to fuel their economy. However, once again, China wasn't providing these governments with money to help them recover during tough times. Instead, there's much more sinister plans at play. Take Venezuela, for instance, it's borrowed more money from China than any other Latin American nation. Venezuela currently owes China over $60 billion that it cannot pay back. This has created what is called a debt trap that will lead the country to default on its payments. The result is that Venezuela is pretty much at the mercy of China. Beijing can now negotiate any type of repayment plan they want, and the Venezuelan government can't do much about it. China has also made certain Latin American countries almost completely reliant on them for trade. 39% of Chile's total exports go to China. If Beijing wants something from the Chilean government, all it has to do is threaten to stop buying its products, and Chile will have to give in to China's demands or suffer the consequences of an economic collapse. Again, experts have been warning both the US and Latin American countries of the dangers of letting China grow its power and influence in the region, and now it might be too late to stop China's growing control over the region. So, there were three main reasons China was able to steal much of Latin America away from the US. First, they invested heavily in various projects and loaned out tons of money, which either put governments in their debt or allowed them to influence strategic decisions. Second, they took advantage of nations in need, before, during, and after the pandemic, making sure that those countries became heavily reliant on China. Third, they exploited the United States' focus on other parts of the world, such as the Asian Pacific and Middle East, to secure power and influence in Latin America. There were also several missteps in recent years taken by the United States government that drove Latin America into the arms of China. The Trump administration dialed back trade relations with much of the region and renegotiated the North American Free Trade Agreement, making it less favorable for certain Latin American countries. Even during the Obama administration, less attention was given to trade in the Western Hemisphere while China was growing its investments in Latin America. During both administrations, experts warned of the growing need to refocus U.S. attention on Latin America as China had become a strategic competitor and was quickly gaining influence. Unfortunately, like in the past, those warnings all went unheeded. Now that we know how China has been stealing Latin America from the U.S., let's go back in time. For decades, the U.S. had a firm grip on Latin America, and now it's all falling apart. In 1823, the U.S. drew up the Monroe Doctrine to stop European influence in the Americas. At this point, the Western Hemisphere dominated the world mostly unchallenged. However, that would obviously change in the future. During the Cold War, the U.S. started refocusing its attention on South America to ensure that communist influence wasn't spreading closer to home. This didn't work in every nation, as Cuba firmly became allied with the Soviet Union, but China was yet to be a threat. This period saw the U.S. tightening its grip on Latin America and keeping non-Western powers away from the Western Hemisphere. Even still, during the Cold War, a number of authoritarian rulers took hold in Latin American countries. The CIA backed coups in some, and the population overthrew oppressive regimes in others. But the governments of many countries in this part of the world were still consumed by corruption and authoritarian rule. In recent years, many Latin American nations have shifted toward more democratic elections. However, oftentimes there are players behind the scenes endorsing certain candidates. For example, both Russia and the US provided support for different candidates in the recent Venezuelan election elections in 2018. 
Russia deployed the Wagner Group, a band of mercenaries to the region to provide security for President Nicolas Maduro when US-backed opposition began to protest. And when Russia becomes involved in foreign politics, it's a safe bet that China will take some sort of interest in what's going on. Russia normally uses a more hardline and public approach for its intervention in foreign affairs, while China often works behind the scenes to influence politics and get what they want. So, while Russia might have been funding authoritarian candidates in Latin American countries and providing them with some muscle, China was tricking entire governments into becoming indebted to Beijing and fostering reliance on China. In 2017, China set its sights on Panama, one of the most important countries for trade in all of Latin America. This is because of the Panama Canal that allows vessels to pass between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans without traveling all the way around the tip of South America. Around $270 billion worth of cargo goes through the canal every year, which is an astonishing amount of money. It was in 2017 that President Xi visited the country and proposed 16 different deals to the Panamanian government. Xi's intent was to leverage Panama's strategic position to help elevate Chinese trade and influence in the region. A plan was put into place to entice further trade and promote regional cooperation. China realized that after their cargo ships dropped off goods in Panama, they could then load up on exports from Latin America and North America before heading back to China. It was then worth passing back through the Panama Canal rather than taking the cheaper route around Europe with an empty ship. This would benefit the Panamanian government because it costs an ocean liner around $1 million to go one way through the canal, and it would end up being a win-win situation for both China and Panama while also fostering a stronger relationship between the two countries. In this circumstance, the United States caught on. They became very worried about what it would mean if China influenced the politics and decisions of Panama. So the United States government put huge amounts of pressure on Panama to push them away from making a deal with Beijing. In June 2019, the U.S. Financial Action Task Force listed Panama as a country that was not seriously trying to stop money laundering, and the following month a new government took office that was not as pro-China as the previous administration had been. But China hasn't given up on its Panamanian desires. The Panama Canal officially opened on August 15, 1914. For almost a century, the U.S. controlled the ins and outs of the canal from behind the scenes, and sometimes in not-so-subtle ways. In the 1940s, the U.S. Department of Commerce set up a free trade zone in Colón, Panama, which sat near the entrance to the canal. This area became known as the Cologne Free Trade Zone and allowed American companies like Gillette, Coca-Cola, and Pfizer to begin operating in Latin America. Fast forward to the current day, the dominance of the U.S. government and companies in the region is under serious threat. Now Chinese goods make up the largest share of all imports coming into the region at around 40% of the total. The scary part for the United States is that this number is only growing. More and more Chinese companies are using the Cologne Free Trade Zone to reach Latin American markets, and at that same time, Chinese ships and goods are increasingly using the Panama Canal to move both imports and exports to and from China. This is unsurprising as it makes sense for Chinese companies to set up in the Cologne Free Trade Zone and take advantage of the ports there, but as the Chinese influence grows in Panama, the United States' hold on the region is diminishing. As of right now, the U.S. still has a dominant presence, but that could change at any point as China seems to be unrelenting in its desire to increase its influence in and around Panama. Ever since 2017, when the China Land Bridge Group purchased Margarita Island to build the Deep Sea Panama Cologne Container Port, the U.S. government has become especially concerned. This area was once a U.S. military base, and now it's being used to wage an economic and diplomatic war against the U.S. The port is expected to cost well over a billion dollars to build, but it's the perfect example of China's strategy in Latin America. Once the deal was finalized, a lot more politicians in the U.S. started to realize just how powerful China had become in the region. We now know how China managed to steal Latin America from the United States, but we still haven't gotten into exactly why Beijing is focusing so much attention and resources on the region. Some of these reasons will be unsurprising, but others will shock you. Reason 1. Taiwan it may seem odd that an island nowhere near Latin America is one of the main reasons China's pushed so hard to strengthen its position in the region. But you'll be surprised to find it's a main reason why China expanded into the Western Hemisphere. Before China purchased the land where Panama Cologne Container Port would be built, the Panamanian government stood with the United States and the rest of Western powers in condemning China's aggressive stance against Taiwan. However, after the deal was finalized, Panama had a very different perspective on the whole matter. Less than a week after construction began on the port, the Panamanian government abandoned their support of Taipei and sided with Beijing over the growing conflict in the South China Sea. 
and Panama is by no means the only Latin American country that has shifted its support from Taiwan to China. Currently, only 14 nations in the entire world have diplomatic relations with Taipei. It's important to note that although the US and other Western powers support Taiwan and unofficially recognize it as a sovereign nation, they do not have diplomatic relations with the island because of backlash from China. While discussing Taiwan, things get a little confusing because of the economic and diplomatic power China wields in the region. Technically, there are three stances that nations take when it comes to Taiwan. The first is nations have diplomatic relations with the People's Republic of China and absolutely no relationship with Taiwan because they don't recognize it as a sovereign nation. This includes much of Africa, the Middle East, and parts of South America. The second stance is countries have formal relations with China but also have informal agreements with Taiwan, which includes much of the rest of the world that doesn't fall into the first category, including the United States and most of Europe. The third stance is the nations that have no formal relations with China and only have diplomatic ties to Taiwan, which are Belize, Guatemala, Haiti, the Holy See, Honduras, Marshall Islands, Nauru, Palau, Paraguay, St. Lucia, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Swaziland, and Tuvalu. So, even though United States President Joe Biden has recently said the U.S. will come to the aid of Taiwan if it's invaded by China, the two countries still don't have any formal diplomatic relations. This has to do with Beijing stating that any nation that tries to establish formal diplomatic relations with Taipei would be comparable to the nation committing an act of war. China is successfully isolating Taiwan from the rest of the world, and it's very clear that the main goal is to eventually seize the island and put it under the control of Beijing. And as crazy as it sounds, stealing Latin America is allowing China to do just this. The more isolated Taiwan is, the easier it'll be for China to seize it in the future. With every nation that severs diplomatic ties with Taipei, the Chinese government gets closer and closer to its goal. And that's why when Panama switched its diplomatic stance to align with Beijing over Taiwan, it was a huge cause for concern. And even if a government does believe Taiwan should be its own sovereign nation, there's little it can do. China has stated it will not trade or form diplomatic relationships with any country that officially recognizes Taiwan. That's not an option for almost every country in Latin America. Many nations now rely so heavily on Chinese imports and the ability to export their own goods to China that it would cripple their economy if Beijing severed diplomatic relations. It is this leverage in Latin America that China is using to isolate Taiwan even further. Out of the 21 Latin American countries, only four still formally recognize Taiwan, and that number is likely to decrease to zero, as Paraguay is very much in debt to China, and Honduras, Guatemala, and Belize will likely be swayed by China. China's economic might in the future. China has so much economic power that it can incentivize governments to do what it wants in Latin America by promising investments and funds to help their economies grow. As we said, money talks, and China is using it to get exactly what it wants in Latin America. Reason 2. Increasing Soft Power Investments and trade in Latin America definitely yield economic benefits for China. However, the reason why they're still investing so heavily in the region doesn't just have to do with money but with soft power as well. Soft power is the ability to shape the preferences of others using appeal and attraction. Basically, China wants to be able to shape the narrative around itself while also making people believe that they're doing good for the world. This can be done at the government level but also through the indoctrination of citizens. By shaping the perceptions of the Latin American people, Beijing hopes to turn many countries away from their close ties with the US and draw them into a positive relationship with China. The crazy part is that they've always been largely successful at doing this, which is one of the reasons that China has been able to steal much of Latin America from the US. More and more nations and local governments are seeing China as a viable alternative to the US or any European countries they rely on. President Xi Jinping has visited Latin America no fewer than 11 times since he took office in 2013. These diplomatic tours were carried out to cut deals, but also to show the people of Latin America that China could be an ally and a friend. Xi made promises of economic growth and more jobs for the average person. Obviously, China could not care less about a farmer in Chile or a mid-level businessman in Mexico City, but by creating the perception that China will help these people, it shifts their worldview. Anything that Beijing can do to increase favor with Latin America will hurt the US's control in the region. China has even signed comprehensive strategic partnerships with Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Ecuador, Mexico, Peru, and Venezuela. This is the highest classification it makes with its diplomatic allies, and it's these nations where Chinese influence is growing the fastest as it writes a new narrative around the benefits that a diplomatic relationship with Beijing can have. Reason 3. Cash 
Chinese expansion into Latin America isn't just about stealing power from the US, it's also about making money and securing resources to allow China's economy to grow. The number one trading partner with many South American countries isn't the United States anymore, but China. And being the main trading partner of an entire continent comes with some great benefits. Chinese goods are being sold around Latin America, and a huge amount of natural resources are being shipped back to China. Each diplomatic relationship that China secures comes with economic benefits. This may take the form of incredible deals on natural gas and oil, or it could be that China is allowed to mine or build infrastructure without pesky environmental or human rights regulators getting in the way. All of these things cut costs, even if they result in avoidable deaths and the destruction of our planet. Some of Latin America's developing economies need a little push that China is more than willing to give in return for the exclusive trade deals in the future. When China invests in a country, it's not out of the kindness of their hearts, but because they expect a return on their investment in the future. Yes, one perk is weakening the United States' influence in the region, but another is that as Latin American countries become stronger, it'll only bring in more cash for China. That being said, there are some cases where China just wants to strip a nation of its resources and it could not care less if it leads to an economic collapse, but in the end, even these types of situations all come down to money. Reason 4. UN Votes Latin America has not just been overlooked by the United States in recent decades, but by the international community as a whole. China has taken full advantage of this by investing heavily in the region. In return, they've secured a lot of diplomatic support in organizations like the UN. The votes of more and more Latin American countries are shifting toward what China wants. This includes nations like the Dominican Republic, El Salvador, and Panama changing their view on the recognition of Taiwan. However, the influence China has over Latin America has come with all kinds of other benefits on the international stage as well. In votes to appoint Chinese representatives to multinational institutions, China can rely on Latin American countries to vote in their favor. When voting for international standards or laws, China now has the ability to sway the outcome in its favor by using its influence over countries that rely on them. It's not hard to see why China wielding more power over Latin American countries is concerning for other nations such as the US and its allies, who are desperately battling to contain China's influence. China stealing Latin America from the US now has even greater international ramifications. The US is still the only superpower in the world, and it doesn't seem as if China will be able to reach that level of influence anytime soon. However, even the world's only superpower will have a difficult time standing up to a unified front of pro-Chinese nations, and this is a real crisis for the United States and one of the main reasons Washington has made a renewed effort to combat Chinese influence spreading across Latin America. But is it too late? The power China wields on the international stage is growing and growing. There are more developing nations around the world than there are high-income countries. China's positioned itself as an investor and an ally for nations that are not as economically advanced as some Western countries. However, this is not done in ethical ways or even with the nation's future in mind. China pouring money into developing economies without sustainability planning or stipulations on how funds can be used could lead to economies collapsing in the future. However, China only cares about the here and now. What's important to them at the moment is using their power and influence in Latin America and around the world to shape global norms and regulations to benefit them. This is one of the main reasons that securing diplomatic and economic ties with Latin American countries has been such a priority for Beijing. If it can sway the votes of the international community to its side, it'll weaken the power of the US. China is still a long way from this goal, and it'll need to invest more money, time, and relationship building in Latin America if it hopes to create any formal allies in the Western Hemisphere. Reason 5. Military Presence a byproduct of China investing in Latin America is that nations with the closest ties to Beijing, or at least those that are in the most debt, tend to lean toward more authoritarian forms of government. This is unsurprising, as China is not just spreading its wealth but its ideology as well. There's also the fact that it's much easier for one authoritarian government to work with another as things like opposing viewpoints are less likely to stand in their way. In countries like Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela, China has promoted and funded populist ideologies. This is because these ideas are more in line with the communist structure that China uses at home. That being said, communism in China is not the ideal communism where everyone is equal. Instead, it's used as a guise to allow a dictatorship to rule the nation. This is what started to happen in certain Latin American countries as well. During the Cold War, this type of ideological shift was exactly what the United States was trying to prevent. Now, instead of the Soviet Union threatening the security of nations geographically close to the US, it's China who's taken up the reins and is launching a very similar ideological war. 
Beijing constantly complains about the encroachment of Western ideologies closer to China's border, but they're doing the same thing in Latin America. As governments in Latin America become more authoritarian and switch their viewpoints of China, it could allow Beijing to develop alliances and build military bases in the Western Hemisphere. Even if the United States strongly objects to such an outcome, it has very little ground to stand on. For decades, the U.S. has been building and expanding military bases in the Pacific and nations around China. It'd be hard to argue that China was being any more aggressive than the U.S. already is if they built their own military bases in Latin America. We aren't there yet, but it's not difficult to see a future where the countries that are the most reliant on China for their economic health are forced to accept a Chinese military presence within their borders. We know why China is taking over Latin America and how it happened. Now the question becomes, what is the U.S. currently doing to stop China's expansion into the Western Hemisphere, and is it too late? In 2018, the United States launched the America Crece initiative. It was designed to contest China's Belt and Road initiative. America Crece's goal was to help Latin American nations attract private investment while following transparency rules based around international best practices. One example of this is the U.S. International Development Finance Corp., which planned to invest $1 billion into Guatemala's private sector to create jobs. The results of the project are still ongoing, but Guatemala is not one of the countries that China has shown interest in as of yet. This means that although Guatemala-U.S. relations may become stronger, this won't help the United States regain influence over other Latin American countries that have become close to China. It's also important to note that these U.S. investments tend to not be as enticing as Chinese investments, which come with no rules or regulations. When a government needs to adhere to certain stipulations in order to use the money it's been given, it can't use it as it sees fit. These regulations are put in place to make sure the funds aren't mismanaged, but pretty much every government in the world is rife with corruption. Even though China's influence is continuing to grow in Latin America, it seems like the U.S. government is either not concerned or reacting very slowly, which is alarming to many experts in Latin American affairs. The money and trade deals offered by Beijing are not being done in a sustainable way and come with some serious consequences in the future, like complete dependency on China. The United States has a century of trade deals, aid, and investments in Latin America, so it already has a strong foundation with many of the governments. It'll take time for China to whittle away these relationships, but it seems to have been doing pretty well so far. But this is why China's soft power and influence are so important to their endgame. They know they can't change the perception of Latin America overnight, but given enough time, they could erode the confidence that Latin American people and governments have in the United States and improve their perception of China. There is no denying that the U.S. still spends much more money on development and aid in Latin America than China does. However, the amount spent can be offset by China creating new narratives, influencing policies, and controlling Latin American telecommunication networks. During past administrations, the U.S. has seemed to largely ignore Latin America compared to other parts of the world, while China is investing more heavily in the region. The governments and people of Latin America have taken notice of this. If the U.S. does not get serious about creating closer ties with countries in the Western Hemisphere, it may only be a matter of time before the whole of Latin America allies itself with China. Now watch why China will never be a global superpower, or check out China, the U.S., and NATO's World War III plan.